right, I've had this system running now for about a month, so I thought I'd walk you through all of the changes that I've made to this so far. Now, I first of all, I only had this one side done at first, and I've since added the other side as well. So there's no plants in this side yet, but they are coming. So that is one of the updates. Now, one of the biggest updates was the seed trays. So these have been added as mounts to the slat wall itself, and the lids just come off. So I've got these uh, Jello shot cups, these teeny tiny ones, you can get them real cheap. And I just end up putting some paper towel in, and occasionally I'll put some of these clay pebbles in as well. And then I'll pop the seeds in. We can take a look at one over here. So this right here is a snap pea seed. And so it's just got a little piece of paper towel in there. And so the seed will slowly sprout inside of here. And once it gets big enough, which this is starting to get close, you can kind of see the, uh, kind of see the leaves starting to pop up there, that little bit of green. And so once it gets big enough, I put them in these little test tubes. So pull one out here. So this is this is just a little glass tube that I have made these custom silicon rubber caps to to help capture the plant in here. It just kind of grips it and holds it in place, and this lets it the roots grow into the test tube. And so as they grow, they'll end, slowly end up going down to the very bottom of this tube. Once they get to the bottom, that's when they'll be ready for the full slat wall system. So this is basically a crack key method where you just fill it in and then as the roots absorb the water up through, more oxygen gets sucked in, giving oxygen to the roots. I've also added just a slight bit of nutrient water to this. So it's got just a little bit in there that it can slowly grow and start getting used to the nutrient solution within the system as well as getting light from the actual system up above as well. That way it'll continue to grow upward. Now down here I've actually added a couple of things. One is a dehumidifier. Uh, since there's so much water that's running through this system on a, like throughout the entire day, uh, in this work, little studio workshop space that I've got, there's a lot of metal. So I'm just trying to pull out a little bit of water from the air to help prevent things from rusting. This probably should be a little bit bigger, but it's enough to pull that just that little bit of extra moisture from. Also as the bonus that as it fills up, I can just dump it right into the tank, which this tank I've actually made some modifications to as well. Now, originally I had a lid like this. Uh, this is what came with the, uh, so this is just a trash can that I bought. So it, nice and cheap. I just wanted to find the thinnest uh, water container that I could so then it would all be up against the wall and wouldn't stick out a significant amount. So this lid I thought was going to work pretty well but it's very flimsy, very flexible and I originally just drilled a few holes in and then connected the hoses up uh, but there's a lot of uh, space around the sides here that was letting a lot of light in especially with the holes because I had to drill a pretty big hole to let the uh, plug here come up through the lid and out and with all the nutrients and the water and everything and the light source directly above, it was creating a lot of algae in the system. So I ended up creating a 3D print for the top itself so then I can block all that light and get the holes exactly how I want them. And these are printed as two halves. So I was able to get the plug in here before I connected them with just a screw. And now I can easily lift it up and nothing's, uh, it slows the light down significantly. Now, something I think I'd like to change up with this is rather than uh, have the three different holes here, I'd like to put them all in one side and then do a little bit of a hinge here so that then I can lift the flap up so that then it's a lot easier to fill this with water. 
Uh, I've been doing uh, filling the water up and after about a week and a half to two weeks, it gets low enough that I need to add additional water to it. And then I've been doing a full cycle where I empty all this water out and then refill uh, the whole tank with fresh nutrients and fresh water. That'll help with the pH balance and make sure the nutrients don't get out of whack as it's all going through the system. Now, as I get additional plants in here, the water use may increase. So this might end up being more of a weekly thing unless I were to get a, a bigger tank. All right, so originally when I was building this system, I designed it so then these uh, individual pods they would connect with tubes between them from the bottom of it to the top of the next one. Uh, but since then, I, I didn't end up liking the tubing. And so these are currently sat just on top of each other. Now, this is what one of the individual pods looks like. So this is the top of it. And there's a little bit of a gap right in the very front here. So the water falls down and comes down through this gap and then falls across the cup itself and then we'll come out the bottom. And I've added a little bit of a, uh, a screw here with a little bit of a, a lip to it. And this helps so then the, when the water starts coming out, it doesn't spread across the bottom here. So you can see before I added this, it was spreading out and that's what all of this mineral buildup is here. Now, another thing, because of the way that I was originally designing this, uh, expecting to do the tubing going down from these, uh, the tops are left open. Uh, so it just kind of falls directly down into it. It doesn't snap together in any way. It just happens to be that they are layered across each other. Uh, now, when I added the second half to this, the water flow significantly slowed down enough that the water Enough that the water, when it was coming down the front here, it was coming down into the pod, like it, it was kind of like bending backwards and falling down the back half of this instead of falling over the cup because the, the rate of the water was slowing down. So I ended up designing a little uh, adapter for this since I've already gotten all these printed. Normally I, I would, if I was designing this from scratch, I would end up building this into the design itself. Uh, so instead, since these are already printed, I don't want to waste all this filament. Uh, I've designed this, and this is just a, like a little lip thing. So it sets right inside of this. Just like this. And then I pinch it down. And so all that that's doing is trapping the water and forcing it to funnel through here. And that little lip kind of like funnels it directly down onto the top of that cup. Now, if I were designing this again from scratch, I, uh, I think I would make the hole down here significantly wider and kind of build this, uh, the little uh, edge here, this little lip edge into the bottom of the cup so I wouldn't have to do an additional uh, print and screw it in. All right, so one more thing down here. I have this IoT plug. This is a Casa, K-A-S-A plug and it's a convenient IoT plug because it, it's got a little button on here that can turn in the, the water pump on and off. And it can also do it through the cloud so I can turn the, the, the device on through my mobile phone. The main reason I like these ones so much though is that these connect directly to the wireless. And so I have a Raspberry Pi, uh, I think it's an older one, like a 2B model, that is doing the UDP broadcast scanning to look for this device and it finds it by the name. And so I have the Raspberry Pi that is able to do the cycling to turn this on and off. So technically the, the Casa app has uh, scheduling, but it limits you to 24 entries per device, which as once you get to on and off, that limits you to a max of once an hour, uh, or once every two hours. Uh, which isn't quite enough for the flexibility that I need for a system like this. But since I have the Raspberry Pi running with, the, uh, with a script that's running and keeping this on with a cron job, that's able to just do it locally on the network. That also has the benefit that if my internet ever goes down, I don't have to rely on the cloud network being able to turn this on and off. I just have the IoT device 
or my Raspberry Pi here doing it locally on my network. Uh, I did recently though have a small blip of power go out which caused the Raspberry Pi to shut off and then turn back on but I didn't have the script turn on again all by itself which unfortunately caused all my strawberries to dry out. So since this system is an aeroponics system, the roots are all completely exposed to the air, which means if they don't get water every couple of hours at the very least, the roots are gonna dry out very rapidly. So my strawberry plants went like 10 to 12 hours without getting water, and so they just dried right up. So two out of the five that we're going are all that's left. So I have a whole bunch more of them coming. Now, in order to help alleviate that issue, uh, for now, I migrated the Raspberry Pi over to my server space, which is all on a uh, battery backup system. So that'll at least prevent the blips of power going. Uh, unfortunately, there's still a chance that if we went with power without power long enough, then the whole system is going to collapse. So an ideal scenario would be if I could uh, have a full battery backup system for just this system, but that's a uh, uh, big enough expense that it's probably not gonna happen. All right, so that's the system. Uh, I've got a, a bunch of uh, snap peas that I'm gonna put up in the top here. And so those will kind of flow down. And then I've got a handful of uh, jalapeno plants, which I'm gonna start in here and see how they do. Uh, I'll put them down on the bottom since those will get pretty big. I just wanna see how well those would be structured inside of here. There's a lot of space within these pods that the roots can grow and a lot of structuralness that they should be supported well enough. Uh, but they may eventually have to be migrated to something more like a full like top-down bucket system. So we'll see how those go. And then uh, the two strawberry plants that I've got left up here, those are the only ones that are uh, from the previous uh, ones that I got. And I've got a bunch more. I ended up ordering another 20 that I'll be filling this whole side with strawberry plants. Uh, an interesting one was actually this uh, Meyer lemon tree plant. I've had this going for a while and I had it in just a, a tiny, um, like a, an eight inch ceramic pot and it was doing very poorly. <laughs> it was not well taken care of or maintained. And interestingly it had, uh, I think this was one of the original leaves. And I, so there, there were like four leaves left on this plant when I put it in and within a week, that like I think this has been in for two weeks tops now and it is just exploded with leaves as soon as it got into the system. So yeah, that, that's the whole system now. Uh, I will give another update on this in a few months after I've gotten all the plants coming in and grown through and we'll see how the system actually performs in the long run. All right, I'll catch you guys later.